Hey, what's going on developers? In this tutorial, I want to show you how we can integrate our Nexus application with Nexus package and Google provider. So our users can easily sign in into our application with their Google account. And in the next video, I'm going to integrate this application with Superbase in order to keep track of the users that have signed in into our application with their Google account. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, I open up a brand new Next.js project and the first thing I want to do is to install the Next Auth package. So I open up the terminal and here I want to say npm i Next Auth. Okay, and in the next step, I'm going to go ahead into the app directory and here I'm going to create a directory path called slash API and then slash auth and then inside this square bracket, I'm going to put dot 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 and then next auth. So inside this next auth directory, I'm going to create the wrap.ts file. Okay, and in this file, first of all, I'm going to create a handler. So I'm going to say const handler and then set it to next off function, which comes from the next off slash next. And then inside this function, I'm gonna pass an object. And here in the object, I'm gonna specify the providers list and set it to a list here. So in previous videos, we have set up the credentials provider for the next auth. But in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how we can set up the Google provider with the next auth. So here inside the providers list, I'm gonna specify the Google provider. So here I'm gonna say Google provider, and then I'm gonna import the Google provider from the next auth slash providers slash Google. So here inside the Google provider, I'm gonna pass an object. So first of all, we need to specify our client ID. So here I'm gonna set it to process that env that Google client ID. And then we need to specify the client secrets. So here I'm gonna set it to process that env that Google client secret. And here, as you can see, we have an error here. And that's because when we are retrieving a string from the env file, it might be string or undefined. But this client ID only takes the string. So here, in order to fix that, I'm gonna put a double question mark here and then add a empty string and also with the client secret. Okay, so the error is gone. And as a last step here inside the next auth configuration, file we need to export an object and then inside it we're going to set the handler as get function and handler as post function so this is how we can configure the next auth configuration file with next.js version 13 inside the app directory okay and in the next step i'm going to define a env file here so in the root path of our application I'm going to create a file called .env and then inside this file I'm going to create these two environmental variable Google Client ID and also Google Client Secret. So here I paste the Google Client ID, okay, and then Google Client Secret. Okay, and in the next step we need to go to the Google Cloud Platform Console and get a Google Client ID and also a Client Secret. So let's do that. Okay, I go to the next auth documentation and here inside the provider section I click on the Google provider and then click on the documentation of the Google provider. Okay, and then click on the Google API console. Okay, and in this page, I'm gonna click on the credentials here. And then here, I'm gonna click on the create credentials and then click on the OAuth client ID. Okay, and here we choose the application type. It's a web application. And here we have to put a name of our application. So here, for example, I'm gonna say Sakura Dev Next Auth. Okay, and then here inside the authorized JavaScript origins, we need to add the URI of our application. So since we are running our application in the development server, I'm gonna put the HTTP slash slash localhost 3000. And if you push your project into the production mode, you just need to come back here and change this URI to the actual web address of your web application. Okay, and then here inside the authorized redirect URIs, we need to specify our actual 
web address, which in this case is the localhost 3000, and then API, auth, callback, and then Google. So this slash API slash auth slash callback slash Google will be the same if you're pushing your application into the production environment. But if you do that, you need to change the localhost 3000 to the actual web address of your web application. So I think we're done here and I'm gonna click on the create, okay? And you can see here that we have a client ID and also a client secret. So I copy the client ID and go back to our VS code and here paste the client ID into the Google client ID environmental variable inside the env file and I do the same for the client secret and here paste them for the Google client secret and note that here don't try to use this client ID and secret because after recording this video I'm going to delete these credentials from my Google API console so you need to do this with your Google account okay in the next step I'm going to create a sign in button component so here inside the src directory i'm going to create a directory called components and then inside it i'm going to create a file called signinbutton.tsx and here i'm going to create a functional component okay in the sign-in button we have two conditions if the user already have signed in into our application we need to show the name of the user plus a sign out button and if the user is not already signed in into our application we need to show the sign in button okay so first of all in order to see if the user is signed in or not we use the use session hook so here i'm going to say const an object and set it to use session hook so let's import the use session from the next off slash react and here let's extract the data from the use session and let's rename it to session okay and now we can check if the session is existed and session has a user inside it then the user is authenticated okay so to speed up the process i just paste the JSX for showing the name of the user. So here inside the P tag, we render session.user.name and then we put a button here and inside the onclick event of the button, we call the sign out function. So let's import the sign out function from the next off slash react. So by calling this sign out function, the user will be signed out of our application. So here, if the user is not existed in the session, which means that the user is not authenticated yet, we need to render a sign in button. So here we just return a button and inside the onclick event of this button, we just need to call the sign in function, which comes from the next off slash react. By calling this sign in function, next off redirect us to the sign in page. And inside the sign in page, we can choose the Google provider to log in into the application with our Google account. Okay, so this is a client component because we use the use session hook here. So let's mark it with the use client. And in order to access to the session with the use session hook, which uses the React Context API under the hood, we need to wrap our whole application with the session provider, which comes from the next app. So here inside the components directory, I'm going to create another component called providers. Okay, and inside it, I'm going to create a functional component. Okay, and let's create an interface for the props of this component. It will take the children as a React node. Okay, so here we can say props and set its type to props. And inside the component, we just need to return a session provider, which comes from the next app slash React. Okay, and then we just need to render the props.children. Okay, and we need to mark it with the use client. Okay, and then I go to the root layout of our application and here inside the body section, I'm gonna wrap the whole application with the providers components that we've just created. Okay, so here, as you can see, we wrap the whole application with the providers and inside the providers, we wrap the children with the session provider, which comes from the next off slash react. So in this way now we can access to the use session hook throughout our application okay so 
let's create another component for the app bar. So I'm going to say app bar .tsx. Okay. And let's create a functional component. Let's render a header here. Okay. And let's add some Tailwind CSS classes for the app bar. And inside the app bar, I'm going to put this sign in button that we have just created. So let's import it from the sign in button file. And now I go back to our layout file. And here above the children inside the provider, I'm going to put the app bar component here. Okay. And so now let's run our application. As you can see here, we have a sign in button here. So let's make it a little bigger. As you can see here, we have a sign in button. And if I click on the sign in, and now if I click on the sign in with Google, okay, here I choose my Google account. And here we go. I have signed in into our application with my Google account. So here we can see my name here. By the way, this is my real name and Sakura Dev is the name of my channel. Okay, so if I click on the sign up button, now the user is signed out from our application. And again, sign in button is shown in our app bar. So yeah, in this easy way, we can integrate the Google provider with the next auth package in a Next.js version 13 application. If you want to protect some of your pages from the unauthorized or unauthenticated users, you can watch my other video, which the link is now on the screen. So in the next video, I'm going to go even further and integrate this application with Superbase and keep track of our authenticated user in a Superbase database. So be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.